Kinabis woke up Friday to heavy military presence on the streets of Ouagadougou. Gunfire rang out early in the capital, sparking cool fears. The whereabouts of the country's leader, Colonel Demiba, is still unknown, but a statement from the presidency's social media cited the crisis within the army. According to local journalist Simon Gongo, soldiers from the elite corp rebelled. Soldiers from the Cobra unit are the ones who mutinied to demand better living and working conditions. There's talk of unpaid bonuses that are being claimed. But if we look closely at the events that are unfolding, it is similar to what happened last January. First of all, a gunfire that could be heard from the barracks. This time, it was the Bambasi camp, which is located in a residential area near the presidential palace. And then there was the occupation of the strategic roads, including the axis that leads to the presidency. And then in the city center, the headquarters of the public broadcaster and some other key sections were cordoned off. And this morning, calm prevailed once again, but a precarious calm since these road sections are still blocked, controlled by mutineers. According to our information from government sources, but also from security sources, talks are currently underway between the officers of this unit to restore calm. But uh, as I speak, we know nothing about what is being discussed. If key roads remained unusually quiet, some citizens vented their anger on Facebook after a statement attributed to Colonel Demeba urged them to remain calm. Demeba hasn't delivered on his promise to quench the jihadist insurgency ravaging the country. So one could say that there is a bit of wariness, for sure at the level of the fighters, because we are talking about special forces, and these are the special forces who carry out the operations on the ground. All large-scale operations that are conducted by these special forces. We can talk about discontent. Don't forget that these demonstrations come after the attack on the Jibo convoy last Monday, when the government announced the death of 11 soldiers. The president of the transitional authorities has faced mounting criticism. Earlier this month, he took over the position of defense minister after dismissing a brigadier general. Observers claim pressure also mounted because in the army, some support detained Colonel Emmanuel Zungrana over Colonel de Miba. According to our information, Colonel Emmanuel Zungrana is still in prison, as he was incarcerated for an attempted coup in late 2021. He never got out of prison, and the source is very firm. He's still in prison. And the proof is that the demonstrators who are demanding the departure of President Damiba are also demanding the release of Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Zungrana. So, as we speak, things can change. But then we are talking about Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Zungrana. He's still in prison. Islamic extremist violence has killed thousands and displaced at least two million people. In June, West Africa's mediator for the country said the Burkina authorities only controlled 60 percent of the territory. Ethiopian Yalem Zerfie Ualo became the youngest winner of the London Marathon on Sunday, recording the third fastest time in the women's competition's history. The 23-year-old beat last year's winner, Kenyan Joycelyn Yeb Kosgay and fellow Ethiopian Alemu Megerto, second and third respectively. Yes. I'm so happy uh, to win the London Marathon. This is the first time uh, I come. Uh, uh, the London people is very shouting. Uh, that's inspiring me. Uh, thank you, uh, London Marathon, uh, London people. Yeah, I'm so happy uh, to win London Marathon. You've only had to. The Ethiopian runner appeared to trip on a speed bump with 10 kilometers remaining, banging her head and hurting her hip and knee but she somehow recovered to rejoin the leading pack and crossing the line in 2 hours, 17 minutes and 25 seconds. At least 12 people have died in a twin-car bomb attack 
on local government headquarters in the capital of Somalia's Hiran region. At least 10 others were injured and buildings were destroyed in the blast. The militant group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the incident. Iran has been at the center of a recent mobilization against the Al-Qaeda-linked insurgents. It's believed the suicide bombings may have been in retaliation to the weekend killing of a top Al-Shabaab leader. Authorities announced just hours earlier that Abdullahi Nadir, who had a $3 million bounty on his head, was killed in a joint operation by the Somali National Army and international partner forces. Newly elected Kenyan President William Ruto arriving in Parliament. In a major policy shift, his government has authorized the cultivation and importation of genetically modified crops and animal feeds, bringing an end to a 10-year ban. The announcement came as the country experiences its worst drought in 40 years. It's estimated that at least 4 million people are going hungry in 23 counties, forcing the government to provide them with food relief. Kenya has been reluctant to approve the import and planting of GM crops amid ongoing concerns about possible health risks. They are, however, said to offer several advantages, such as higher yields and resistance to drought and pests. Which is why Ruto's government has turned to GM crops in the hope that it will result in bigger harvests. The authorities say they want to significantly redefine agriculture in Kenya and reduce its dependence on water-intensive agriculture by planting crops that are drought-resistant. Agriculture is a pillar of the Kenyan economy, accounting for 20% of GDP. Liberian and U.S. authorities have announced the seizure of 520 kilos of cocaine, estimated to be worth $100 million. The seizure took place last Saturday in the outskirts of the Liberian capital, Monrovia. According to Monday's announcement, two men were also arrested, one from Guinea-Bissau, the other a Lebanese national. For several years, West Africa has been a transit zone for drugs produced in Latin America and destined to Europe. Besides the U.S. and Liberian authorities, the Brazilian law enforcement agency was also involved in the operation. U.S. authorities did not confirm reports circulating in social networks that the drugs were stored in containers of frozen fish. The authorities also confirmed that investigations are still ongoing and some accomplices were still at large. Ethiopia announced on Wednesday that it had accepted an invitation from the African Union to hold peace talks with rebels in the northern region of Tigray. In a statement, the Ethiopian Government Communication Service, GCS, said the AU had communicated in its invitation the date and venue of the talks. Tigray forces has yet to respond to the invitation for talks this weekend in South Africa, which would be the first formal negotiations between the two sides since the outbreak of war in November 2020. No details on other participants were released either, including whether neighboring Eritrea, whose army supports the Ethiopian government forces, had been invited. Tigrayan rebels have always said they would not accept Asmara's presence at any talks. The AU reportedly set up a troika of mediators made up of former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta, as well as former South African Vice President Pumzile Melambo Nguka. After a five-month truce that raised hopes for peace negotiations, fighting resumed on August 24 in northern Ethiopia between Tigrayan rebels and the Federal Ethiopian Army. The new trailer for Marvel's Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. It's the sequel to the 2018 smash hit Black Panther, which starred the late American actor Chadwick Boseman, the first black actor to headline one of the studio's films. Who's the next Black Panther? I can't tell you. But, but I think what we do see is they're all heroes, because they all have to overcome 
a huge feat, which is the loss of someone incredibly important and central in all their lives. And I think the movie really deals with the fact that we, we can all be heroes. In, in, a, in a strange way, art really reflected life with this. The characters in this movie aren't the only ones that have suffered great loss within the last several years. Right? So we're all coming from this macro place of survival. Plans for a sequel following the film's huge success all changed when Bozeman died in 2020 from colon cancer. He was one of those people that his presence was quiet but expansive. So you don't notice that he's, you don't notice how large of a presence he filled until he's not there. And that's something that, you know, that's just all throughout this process. So we're still all kind of recovering and growing from it, but it's something special. Following his death, Marvel said that in honor of the actor, it would not recast the role he played as Wakanda's King, Chala. The first trailer, released in July, showed the Wakanda nation mourning their king and Chala's sister, Shuri, holding the Black Panther helmet. Most of the other original actors are returning for the sequel, but are tight-lipped about the plot. The film will be released in the United States on the 11th of November. Show them who we are.